Hello and welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video, myself Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're actually going to kick things off with a couple of AMD pieces for you, starting things off with the RX 590. Now of course we are fully expecting to get a full launch of the RX 590 cards next week and we have already seen for instance a model from Power Color but we have been lacking some information even from that and it's kind of the case here as well as we have a Sapphire Radeon RX 590 Nitro Plus Special Edition having been revealed now. I just want to say this information is thanks to videocars.com. So we do get some specs of this particular graphics card, but once again we are missing both base and boost clock. But we do know that the card has 2304, so 2304 stream processors and 8GB of GDDR5 memory, 144TMUs, 32 ROPs and 8000 Mbps memory clock. As I said, it is 8GB of GDDR5. So... Of course, we already knew that this is going to be using the 12NM architecture, but sadly, still no base or boost, as I already said. But we're, as I say, going to be getting a full launch of this next week, so we can obviously expect the full details. Obviously, we're going to get um, reference designs from AMD, release dates, prices, all that sort of thing. But it's still nice to get these little sort of previews, I suppose you could say. But we have another AMD piece for you today. And what we have here is a report from the market analysis firm Mercury Research. And according to their findings, for the third consecutive year, AMD was able to increase their shares in the x86 processor market in the third quarter of 2018. Now, obviously, they are literally only competing against Intel here. So AMD have continued to take more of this particular market away from their direct competitors and at least according to the report, AMD now commands 10% of the entire x86 CPU market. So we have an average 10.6% across server, desktop and notebook sectors. Growth was 1.5% relative to the previous quarter and 3.1% over year over year. Now, unsurprisingly, they did very well in terms of desktop PCs where their market increased to 13% over 12.2 and especially when you compare it to the third quarter of last year that value was 10.9% so they're doing rather well for themselves to say the least. Now unsurprisingly the main culprit isn't really the right word but the main reason for this cited by the researchers is the Ryzen processors. Hardly shocking. AMD have definitely hit on a winner with Ryzen and of course Zen Plus and just yesterday we had the first real look at Zen 2 with the Epic Rome processors. Do check out Paul's video on that just yesterday if somehow you missed all the details. But although 10% might not sound like a lot, it is when it can when you think about the size of this market. And although Intel still has the lion's share, of course, they're not exactly going to be happy about conceding any of the market to their direct competitor. It's exactly especially rather, sorry, should I say, as AMD is not exactly going to be like, oh, 10%, call it there, lads. They're obviously going to continue to be aggressive and competitive and challenge Intel, which obviously has been working out great, not only for AMD, but for us, the consumer, because now that AMD is giving them some competition, Intel have actually made moves that they might not have previously made had Ryzen not been there, like, hey, wake up. <laughs> anyway, let's move on, shall we? So our next item on our itinerary is actually regarding the Radeon Instinct MI60, which was actually revealed just yesterday at the Next Horizon event from AMD. Of course, it is the world's first 7nm GPU. Now, we already know the specs, of course. 4096 stream processors, 4096 bit HPM2 memory interface, 1800 MHz engine clock speed, 1 terabyte per second memory bandwidth, and 7.2, sorry, 7.4, should I say, T flops of peak double precision, that being FP64, and so on. However, here's a bit of a caveat that has just been brought to light. 
the company is not launching this particular accelerator with Windows support, at least at launch. AMD is only releasing x86-64 Linux drivers with API support for OpenGL 4.6, Vulkan 1.0, OpenCL 2.0 and AMD's Rockham Open ecosystem. So not exactly a big deal given that, well, this isn't really intended for gaming, but obviously lack of Windows support is a big deal. You know, Windows isn't just for gaming, obviously. It can be used for literally whatever you want. Linux obviously does tend to be used more on this sort of side of things, but lack of Windows support, at least at launch, is definitely going to be a concern. But I would imagine that it will be added later on down the line, just at least according to this report, not when it first releases. So we're going to finish things up today with Qualcomm. So you may recall back in 2017 there was an antitrust lawsuit filed against the company by the Federal Trade Commission. Now the suit is not actually to go to trial until next year but we do actually have a pre preliminary excuse me, ruling by Judge Lucy Coe of the US District Court for Northern California and she has actually ruled that Qualcomm must license some of its patents for modems to its rivals. Now just to refresh your memory as to the actual nature of the filing against Qualcomm by the FTC, it was for alleged monopolistic behaviour relating to baseband processors and further according to the FTC, Qualcomm has quote, engaged in exclusionary contact that taxes its competitors' baseband processor sales, reduces competitors' ability and incentive to innovate and races, raises prices paid by consumers for cell phones and tablets. So, given Qualcomm's current battle against Apple for, well, a bunch of stuff, I'm not going to go into that because, well, yeah, it's rather lengthy to go into. Go watch one of my many videos where I've talked about it, but you guys probably are familiar with it by now. But regardless, given the fact that they're currently in a dispute between Apple and Qualcomm, the fact that Judy, um, Judge Lucy, should I say, has ruled against them in this way, obviously it is a preliminary ruling, I just want to make that clear again, this could very much change. She has obviously made this decision now. Perhaps that could set the tone for the you know final ruling. Perhaps it doesn't. Either way, this is kind of adding to their woes here. Now, obviously, they have licensed their tech to other companies before, but this is definitely going to be a sort of lift up for the competitors to build their own products based on Qualcomm's designs. So it's interesting that, of course, she's made this ruling, especially in light of some Apple's accusations as well. So this is definitely going to be one to watch, and I'll be curious to see the final result of the actual trial. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Your support is always appreciated, and I'll see you next time.